welcome everybody to our discussion on, on joyful ethics. Uh, maybe I just would say a little bit about this poster we have. Uh, local people probably know what is it and where it is, but um, but for for our guests, uh, you should find it. <laughs> it's not exactly like this, like this, but we were thinking about the uh, Greek mythology and Titans. Only the, the globe, and then we remember, remember that in Vilnius there are some titans holding not the globe but holding something else, and they were just dressed for for a couple of days uh, like Superman. So there's uh, of some people recognize from the title reference, of course, to Nietzsche. And, uh, and uh, Lernas, uh, of course, uh, there is as well. So I just introduce our guest. It's uh, Professor Co uh, Cohen, Richard Cohen from Baku University, Professor of Philosophy. Our guest, Professor of Philosophy, Jim McLaughlin from North Carolina University, United States. And our guest, uh, from, who came from so far from Taiwan, Professor of Philosophy. Uh, Raymond Day, and he has another name, but for me too different. <laughs> so, okay, we're just, I'm just going to start with a few remarks. I think the, the lengthy uh, is a discussion. I, I, I found that, uh, first of all, of course, when you come up with a title for a public event, you want to have it somewhat interesting, and it almost seems contradictory to say, uh, in the Levinasian context, the uh, joyful ethics. Because when Nietzsche speaks of joy and joyfulness, he doesn't exactly have the kind of ethics that Levinas has in mind. In mind, um, now we, the group from the seminar, we've been discussing Levinas for the last four days, and uh, we are aware that his is a contemporary philosophy based in uh, the human body, in, in a body that enjoys the world, a body that enjoys food, enjoys the sun, enjoys uh, the, the free spiritness of just uh, physical physicality and uh, sensation. Uh, and at the same time, uh, Levinas is acutely aware of the suffering that's in the world and uh, sees suffering, the, the, the physical, the suffering, he says, the suffering, uh, the pain called physical, if you remember that expression, uh, the suffering of the other as the real stimulant uh, to moral behavior. Whereas we know in Nietzsche, he condemns pity. Uh, he, uh, Nietzsche says explicitly that there's too much love of the neighbor, not enough love of the self. I, I'm really not sure what world Nietzsche was living in, but um, I have never seen that world <laughs> where there has been too much love of the neighbor. I think, uh, I think we could more accurately describe uh, the world as a place where there's not enough love of the neighbor, not enough uh, concern to alleviate uh, the suffering of others, precisely because we enjoy life. Um, so what, what, what brings them together in any positive sense, uh, Nietzsche uh, and uh, Levinas? First of all, Levinas thinks of Nietzsche's philosophy as a combination of uh, submission, well, let, me, let me get the exact term here, resignation and illusion. Resignation in the amor fati, Right? the uh, acceptance of reality as it is, and illusion in the doctrine of the eternal return, which is a uh, fantasy with no basis in uh, anything other than uh, the attempt to stimulate yourself uh, uh, through illusion, which Nietzsche affirms. Levinas requires then, oh, I want to say what, the, what, the, what I thought was the Nietzsche moment in Levinas. The moment of Nietzsche that Levinas appreciates is this independence of the individual singular human being from the system, right? From the rational system, from uh, uh, a rational understanding. Uh, this is something that Rosenzweig says explicitly in the Star of Redemption before him, that one of the contributions Nietzsche made to philosophy is he's a human being first, before he has a philosophy. It's, it's always Nietzsche we're encountering. And in Stefan Zweig, he says, put aside his doctrines. Don't even think about his doctrines. Think about Nietzsche. That's, that's what the contribution is. So, so, so Levinas will say that Nietzsche has brought that, when, when, when Levinas does his generous reading, what, what I call his generous reading, 
Um, but another connection, I think, uh, is and Nietzsche tells us to live dangerously. Build your houses on the side of Mount Vesuvius. What is the real life of risk? The real life of risk is not cynicism, but sincerity. The real life of risk is to trust people, to believe, to care, to want to improve the world. People will call you a fool. They'll call you an idiot. You'll be wasting your time. Things will always be the same. Nothing will ever get better. Improve yourself. Forget the world. And Levinas is saying, he calls it literally a fine risk. The finest risk we can take as human beings is that we attempt to make the world a little better. That it's not just a matter of self-improvement and meditating on my belly button, but that we, we, we go out, we open ourselves, we welcome our neighbors, and we work to make it a more just world. I, I think this is, this is in the spirit, it's, it's completely different. But if we're going to live dangerously, if we're going to take risks, that's the bigger risk, I think. Now, is it joyful in the sense that Nietzsche is advocating joy? No, I don't think so. This is not uh, a, a kind of Deleuzean delu de, uh, delirium. Uh, is it uh, a life worthwhile? Absolutely. It's that risk of a life worthwhile living not just for oneself, but for others. So I, I, I feel a Nietzsche, you know, it's kind of, you could redirect something in Nietzsche in that, in that line, even if it isn't really where Nietzsche went. So that, that's just my comments, just to begin the discussion. Uh, thinking about, you know, since we're starting with Nietzsche, thinking about in the line in the genealogy of morals where he talks about Mirabeau, the uh, Jacobin. Mm -hmm. And uh, says that Mirabeau uh, never had to forgive anybody because he could never remember being offended, uh, which is a kind of joy. You know, he, he, this is in the section where he's been talking about ressentiment and about uh, he thinks that it's uh, uh, no accident that uh, the Book of Revelation is uh, uh, traditionally seen as being authored by the same. Uh, author of the uh, Gospel of John, the you know, Christian book of love, because there you have ressentiment full scale, where you enjoy the suffering of the other who caused you suffering. Whereas Mirabeau would be the, the contrast to that. Um, and I think you know, when you get in Levinasian ethics, there's a kind of, you know, if you wanted to try and bring them together, there's a joy in the joy of the other. Um, my favorite example of that is uh, in. You know, Dostoevsky, Levinas loved Dostoevsky. Dostoevsky has a wonderful scene in Brothers Karamazov where uh, Zosima's, Father Zosima is remembering his brother Markle. And remember, Markle uh, had been uh, an atheist, uh, had been a cynic, uh, but was dying of tuberculosis. And uh, he has this remarkable experience that, where he changes. And of course, people think, well, it's just the disease working on his brain. We're back to the Duke by morality. Uh, that he has become, you know, he, he sees the world as a kind of paradise and the people in it. And he looks at the uh, um, servant who's going to light the candle at the uh, icon. And he'd forbid her to ever do that. But he looks at it and says, go ahead, light the, light the icon. I, uh, it's not that I, you know, so I will, uh, see, you worship by lighting the archon, and I worship by watching you light the icon. You know, to take joy in the joy of the other person. To see, to find, if you're going to find God, that's what you're going to find. That's what I mean. For me, that's the most interesting uh, and attractive thing about studying life. Can I, can I, let, let me just reinforce that, because I'm sure you were thinking of this line, when Levinas, after talking about Nietzsche, says it would, that, that morality would be a forgetting, it would be an ignorance in the sense that nobility ignores what is not noble. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it's an absolute reference to what you've said. Yeah. How about the song? And if it's joyful. Boring, <laughs> tedious, and heavy talk. You have to speak first and then we're, we're, sing with it. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to sing the song first. Make it joyful first. No, we're, 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 we're. Okay.
the kind of page up where we have to do the dish. But this willingness, so you got to have two shoulder, shoulder willingness and shoulder capacity, ability, either one. Uh, if you lack one shoulder, your, your life will be miserable rather than joyful. So you need a strong shoulder, a, a big shoulder of willingness to carry the responsibility. And ability, the shoulder ability to carry responsibility. And both together, there's a possibility of joyful effort. Thank you. So, thank you. And um, maybe any comments or questions? Or, or songs? Contributions. Or songs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Or, or, or that. Some comments. And uh, this uh, discussion about the joyful discussion and the joyful ethics, the comparative analysis, I suppose. And uh, when we approach Nietzsche, or rather when we reconcile, try to reconcile Nietzsche with Levinas, um, what we have to do is uh, to to reach or gather some common points that is that makes them together. And that is what I'm trying to do. And uh, uh, as Professor Richard said, Nietzsche, of course, he spoke about uh, about not about against the, the love of the neighbor, one's love of neighbor, and um, uh, the need of uh, Constructing cities in the in the Vesuvius place in the nearby Vesuvius, this one, but uh, Volcan. and this all statements had to be dealt not in the contemporary context, in the 20th century context. I think this period we shall to we shall have to consider the period uh, he spoke these things. At that time, um, the prevailing the moral ethos of Europe was very shallow and he was actually criticizing the bourgeoisie morality of the, of the, of the Europe of, of his period. And probably had he lived in the 20th century or during the time of Levinas, he would, have, he would not have such a, made this statement like actually. And uh, what he wanted out of this was by criticizing the the conservative legal morality of the Europeans of that time was he wanted to create a pathway to a different kind of uh, life, a life that affirms excessively. And uh, at that time it was not possible. And I think perhaps this is the common point or converging point we can, uh, in, to which we can bring Levinas and Nietzsche probably together. That is, uh, Levinas also, in fact, was affirming or stressing the requirement of living an excess life. Why he advocates that we need to build up a radical relationship with us rather than keeping a very shallow kind of, uh, of relationship as advocated by the conservative morality of the, of the last few centuries. And uh, Nietzsche thought that for such a radical living, first we have to overcome Christianity. Christian morality is the prevailing one and all this love of neighbor, that is why he criticizing that. Then only one, one can build a radical relationship with Allah. He was in, in fact in favor of that, but he, he could not uh, make a breakthrough in the, in the, in the time, at the time of his life. And in fact he was a dissatisfied person as a lover and that is why he withdrew him from the society. And, and, uh, Making all these statements and rightly uh, criticizing all the, all the, the, the like uh, uh, the values like uh, compassion and all. Uh, and we, we so, so what I suggest is that we shall not take or read uh, Nietzsche's text literally, but uh, in, a, in a context, context. And uh, this, uh, uh, in fact, uh, the bringing point of Nietzsche and Levinas together. Probably this, this uh, we have to build a pathway to living life in itself. And Levinas' uh, suggestion of, uh, of 
having a radical relationship with God, in fact, condense that or response to that word. That is what I think. So the point of contact is that both of them are, want to wake us up yeah. from our complacency okay. for a better life. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't agree, but that's good. That is a point of contact. <laughs> <laughs> Serving a point of contact. Disagreement is a point of contact. That's a point of contact. Yeah. Okay, good start. Wake up. You need to be happy first to talk about the topic. <laughs> So I'll talk about a different topic. I'll talk about the nice genetics rather than joyful ethics. <laughs> I think uh, 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 so far it doesn't work for me. Let's let, uh, let's just summarize what what's the uh, nice genetics we spoke about it for the last four days. I have an in, I have an infinite responsibility towards my fellow human being, and I have so that's infinite. And it's not just a metaphysical expression, it's infinite because it's never finished. And uh, we uh, kind of almost agreed that today that, uh, at least we agreed that it's messianic in the sense that it's never achievable. And that means it's utopian. So, uh, I, I can't see uh, how it is joyful. It is joyful only in, uh, in, in uh, it can be joyful only in one sense, in the sense that I don't really care about it, and then I'm uh, I'm, I'm satisfied. Otherwise, uh, you know, Lindy, and we mentioned him because he's a great example uh, of. Uh, he mentions uh, he talks all the time about his travels and how he meets the faces and and this uh, guy and uh, this homeless boy in Rio de Janeiro and he gave him five bucks and 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 he, he, he had an encounter and he, and, and it's so beautiful and happy. And for me, it, it's all beautiful till the point when it becomes beautiful and happy, because this is not the end, and this is actually, it's nothing. The, and the, uh, in Levinas, there's also more. You, uh, justice appears, we haven't spoken uh, about this aspect, but at least to my mind, justice appears because this infinite responsibility to the other is only conditioned by another other by another face, and you are more responsible to the one which is weaker, which is more strange, which is uh, further, which is uh, more as a, as a child. And so the, this utopian element of uh, the nice and ethics is, it can be taken, you know, to the it's probably the most extreme impossible ethics I've, I've, I've ever encountered. And uh, and that also, uh, to bring uh, uh, another thing, is uh, Dostoevsky and Levinas loves Dostoevsky, as we know, and he quotes uh, Dostoevsky's phrase, which boggles my mind. I'm, I'm, I'm the most guilty of all. So he, that, that's the unfortunate wording, I, I think, by Dostoevsky, guilty. It can more, also be taken translated responsible. Uh, it, it can be, but uh, I think it's still unfortunate. It could be responsible, but he says guilty. And that brings me more to Kierkegaard than to Levinas. But <laughs> uh, Le Levinas, he didn't need to pick it up, but he picked it up. So he says, I'm, I'm, uh, we are all guilty, but I'm more guilty than anyone. And that uh, the second uh, kind of segment of this phrase for Levinas is really important. So after all what I've just said, I think, it's, you know, and that's the core of, of uh, Levinas and ethics, I, to my mind at least. To, to speak about joyful ethics is, is, is we can talk only after having said all of this, which means, and this is already impossible, and after having said all, I think Raymond came close to what I was, after having understood all of this, you also have to be joyful while doing it. You also have to be happy. So, well, good news for you. you know, it's, it's not that you, you don't have a face, you're completely always responsible. And you don't, you don't have anything. You, all the possession which you enjoyed the moment before, now it does not belong you, uh, to you because it belongs. The world belongs, which just belongs to you. To the other, you've given everything up. So that's not enough. That's more. You have to be happy about it. And uh, uh, so I, I want to emphasize this point because so we don't make it this too trivial. You know, it's just you know, it's all funny. No, it's it's not. Yeah. I, 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 can I, 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 I want to jump in because I want to underline 
what Jim said and how it is also related to what Raymond said and what you've said is perfectly right. Mm. In the same way that Levinas forced us to think about death as not my own, the death that is most important is not my own. It's very hard for us to think that. The death that is most important is the death of the other. Mm. We're, we're geared to think that our own death is the most important death, but it's not. And in the same way, we are geared to think that our joy, my joy, comes first. My happiness, my pleasures, my taste, the fulfillment of my life, that this comes first. And that's why ethics is such a pain. But Levinas is saying, and this is what Jim is saying, the joy of the other comes first. Not some kind of moral demand, we must all be responsible, but provide food. Because food is a joyful and good thing to eat, and, and being hungry is painful. And, and provide shelter, because being in the rain, being in the cold is painful. This is suffering in a very real sense, and the joy of the other comes first. I think this is a powerful message. And if the joy of the other really comes first, then what Raymond said is true. I have to give with a happy face. Because if I give begrudgingly, if I give in a, as, oh my God, another beggar, then I am not providing for the joy of the other. So this, I agree with you. There's nothing more difficult than the ethics that Levinas has set up. And like Kant, there's no happiness for you. <laughs> right, there's no happiness for you. But what ethic is more joyful than this one? Once we get into that Levinasian mode, then the other comes first. It's, it's, it's really our selfishness that prevents us from, from thinking of it as joyful ethics. That, that, that's what, to think, instead of the death that counts as one, the joy that counts is the others. And you know who, every parent knows this. Every parent, because what a pain in the neck children are. <laughs> But yeah. never, never yeah. do we approach yeah. our children. Demons. 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 So never do you approach your children like, oh my goodness, I've got to make your breakfast again. I've got to get your clothes on again. It's like, it. no, <laughs> you shouldn't. You should. <laughs> should. <laughs> right. You don't want to guilt your children. That's the, uh, the, 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 so the thing is, like, like, like we say about, you know, we shouldn't have guilt. And, you know, guilt is uh, something we want to pass. It, it's actually that we don't want to guilt others. And that's the sense of loving us, that I am more guilty than, than anyone else. I don't want anyone else to feel guilty. I want everyone else to be guilt-free. That's, that's what I want. There's a, a mm -hmm. thinking about you know, the guilt thing. Yeah, yeah. And those days. The, the thing that's funny about it is that Zosima and uh, Alyosha, at least in the story, and you, know, you can do yeah. anything with a story, are the most joyful characters. Mm. Yeah, but you know how they're called in Russia? And then the says, yeah, uses they're, that word. They're, 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 they're God's fools. Yeah, they're fools for the price. That's what I said. You have to be an idiot. There's, there's, a, be there's a, a, actually a wonderful film version. Not and and actually, there. there's another. Sorry. The, 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 okay. Maybe you finish. Okay. Okay. Uh, Louis Bonnel's La Nazarin um, uh, is about a Spanish priest who goes to Mexico and he's, he's decided he's going to come live the Christ like life and become a Christ. -like. Yeah. He gives everything to the poor, he gives everything away. He has one problem. He doesn't like people. Yeah. <laughs> and he goes through these set of his adventures. It's really kind of a comedy, but in a kind of horrible way. Uh, and but at the end, he's he's uh, he's lost everything. He's sent to prison, and uh, a woman comes along, gives him a piece of water, mm. and he's hatching. Mm. Uh, now, the point of, the point of all that is that. Talk about our responsibility to the other, uh, but part of that responsibility is what Richard was saying: is to experience the joy, not just your joy, but the joy of another, to share it as much as possible. And in this sense, um, well, I'll leave you. I just wanted to pick up on those the God's fools. And, and, and actually, it's, it's the same uh, well, mystical tradition that we have in Islam and uh, Sufi, and all these wandering uh, idiots who come in. But neither Alyosha nor Zosima are an idiot. They're very 
Uh, well, uh, they are for us. They are for, for us because that, that's... Uh, but uh, uh, there is certainly there uh, what you could call socially negative. And uh, I think that's what happens with... Uh, uh, and then the question which might be raised within this context is uh, how do we combine this Okay, I, I would agree. They have this ethical responsibility towards the other as the face. But what happens is that they uh, they immediately are thrown out of the social uh, cons constructions or institutions. They they are they, 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 I think that's the structure. And uh, I think the easy way out is to say that yeah, because the society is not the nice idea. But I, I think it's an easy way out. To be honest, I think it's it's just that no, no, they're, they're not serious in that. What's required by a political savvy, they're not serious in that way. It's true, they're more sentimental than than oriented to justice. They're they're they're, they're, they're far too moral. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. yeah, That that would be more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a sense in which uh, and we got to get back to yeah. actually loving on Dostoevsky, but there's a sense in which Zosima is like Nero. If we want to go back to Nietzsche, because Zosima sees what people do. Maybe, maybe Alyosha doesn't, but remember, there's supposed to be two more volumes of this, yeah. and they never got rid of it. Zosima sees uh, what people do, and he tells them what they're doing. Yeah, uh, but uh, that, that's, uh, I, I agree with that. In that sense, he's socially adequate, but uh, it, it's just this uh, old tradition of the hermit, and the hermit is, is the one who leaves the community. He goes to the mountains, to the and Zosima is exactly that figure. He goes out, and people have to come to him, and he, he issues all these, you know, well, right all around. But he's, right, he's, right, he doesn't right. live in the community. He's not the bourgeois. Right. He's not a, and the, it's completely different from. Uh, I, uh, sorry, you already know. I'm, I'm going to bring up <laughs> night, right. night of faith, and, and he says night of faith. We never know. Who he is? He lives in this. He he must be. He can be a perfect bourgeois who, after a while, goes home and thinks, "What my wife has done has made uh, no, but, for dinner for me." I, 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 that, that's completely different. Uh, thing. He I'm, I'm going to disagree different. with your reading of the book again because uh, <laughs> it's Pharaoh who's the traditional person, it's not Zosima. Zosima, you know, maybe he's a curse. He he eats. He enjoys. He uh, and the and you know that's. When his body stinks, when he's uh, dead, that's when all there's a, this reaction against him that he wasn't a real hermit like he was supposed to be. And then, you know, remember when he kills Alyosha, he tells him to leave the monster mm -hmm. to go live in the world. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, okay, come back. It's a possibility. I agree. Wow. Yeah. First, I think I want to uh, challenge what you said. Like justice is like you need to see who is weaker. But I think when you at attend to the level of justice. It's about who is uh, right, who is wrong. It's about consciousness, about representation, about judgment. It's not about anymore like the, the, the stranger who is more stranger. It's about if the stranger is, uh, is guilty, then the stranger needs to be put in the system of justice. But uh, I'll, that's just a comment. So then uh, I want to just come to say like the, the joyful thing. We need to talk about what we are talking about, the joyfulness. Because if we talk about the interiority, about the enjoyment or this kind of separation of me from, from the totality of the system. Yes, I agree, there's Nietzsche in Salvix and Levinas in Ideology and Idealism. He said, Freak and Nietzsche, they freak subjectivity from this objective scientific system and they freak the subjectivity. That's, that's what he said there. So he agreed with Nietzsche because, because of this enjoyment of the I, they, they kind of free this individual who can be responsible in his ethics from this totality, from this system, from the ob objective uh, system people pursue. For example, he might even like Nietzsche more than the, the, you know, the structuralism because they see like, you know, everything is in the structure, but he might like Nietzsche more than them. So that's like how I think Nietzsche can be here for the joyfulness. But uh, uh, after that, how about after that, if we face the, face the other, if we have the responsibility, he called it to grab great uh, gravity, it is heaviness. He, he, he said because this responsibility, 
it, 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 it's like a how we can ground, not ground, but it's like this this gravity, this this kind of thing. Like <laughs> no, the oh, gravity, right, right. like gravity. He talked about a lot about. I don't know how to say. I don't want to say gravity is groundness because it's not like we have a place, but it's like kind of make us human, kind of the, this weight give us our life weight or value. Like I don't know how to explain weight. It can be explained as value in some sense. But where this this place can have joy for, or if how do you define like joyfulness? I, I guess there's two level. One is if you if the other when they demand you ethically, if you respond, you are not. I mean, it's not to say you are not guilty, but you respond to the shame or the guilty you the other bring to you. In that sense, you can say it's joy because you you are not. You respond to the guiltiness that are upon you. Then there's a certain lightness because you respond. You, you fulfilled your responsibility. Although it's always infinite, but at that moment you responded. You can see there is a joyfulness, or whatever. But it's not the common sense to say I'm happy. I'm just like relax or whatever. Mm -hmm. And from the other point of view, I think this interestness is joyfulness because at this point you don't have any interest. You are disinterested. You don't care about this my interest because why you, you, you want to say I enjoy it because I want my interest. You have your interest and you enjoy and you are happy. But how about we just bracket this interest to say we, we see the world in a disinterested part, point of view, then there is no harm. Because there's no you it's, it's all like disinterestedness. That then you don't you don't need to judge to say, oh this is harm, this is harmful, whatever, because it's all for the other. Then that's that's how like Levinas was talking about uh, also in ideology and idolism about like how Marx didn't solve because actually Marx Marxism is for joy like like I can have what I need I can like everyone has what, what they want and it's, it's like a fulfilled society whatever it is joyful but Marx didn't solve the problem of death like let me say of death. death. Yeah, we are facing death. So if you want to say there is a messianism, whatever, people still suffer because death. I mean, whatever, you, you can have whatever material you want. Death is there waiting for us. We will suffer because death. But the devil has solved the problem because you said more important is death of the other. Because the self is for the other. So like he kind of, this disinterestness kind of, I don't know, maybe you don't feel like this way, but because disinterestness is kind of diverted our afraid of death because it's, it's more important than death of the other. So and, and I think this, if you want to say joyfulness or whatever, they, there can be a brace of that in, in this part. And a, like uh, Bertina Burgo, she has a book called the, you know, the, 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 the humanity adore the, the earth. So why this adore? It's, it's, it's beauty. And where that is from? I think that's from in another level, grace. That's joyful. Human beings are blessed. Because you said patience for hope or whatever, so I think in that level there is joy, because grace, because uh, like the we were talking about the glory of infinity, that, that can be joyful, but that's like a very holy version of joyfulness. So I think we need to really separate what we are talking, in which level. Mm. Yeah. One, one difference I see in that, 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 did you want to? I can I can pick up one oh, story. Oh, oh. Um, Zhuangzi actually two stories to, to share. One is uh, when his five wife died, he actually celebrated. He played music where everybody was quiet and sad, and he was happy and then play music. And people Zhuang 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 Zhuang. Zhuang. and and people actually the neighbor asking him why you are so happy. Your wife died, and why is it? And he just answered. How, how did you know my wife's not happy at this moment? If so, to him, where he implying the death is unknown, how you don't have to be sad to be ethical. Are you with me on the point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zhuang Zhi's yeah, yeah. wisdom. You don't have to be sad. It's, it can be joyful. It's ethical. Okay, number one. The second uh, story where uh, follow uh, Ma Machine's idea of the grace. As Zhuangzi also tell another story about the chef who killed uh, a cow, Zhuangzi, but how many of the I mean, uh, a chef who know how to uh, kill a cow and and dissect and, and cut cut all his 
the, 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 the meat mm -hmm. without uh, almost almost without let the cow feel pain. <laughs> and the reason is why? Because is killing a cow make cow painful because you don't know how to kill the cow. And this uh, this uh, well is experts uh, of dissecting cow. The, the chef actually. He know exactly the structure of the cow, the bone structure, the feeding, which part of the nurse is where, and this is what John's trying to say is, well, running the country is like dissecting the cow. You got to know the everything. How to kill it without yeah. well, like <laughs> <laughs> how to kill it without its ethical way to okay. kill it. Okay. It's like, um, but this again back to my. Uh, Two shoulder theory. To read Levinas, only increase your willingness to shoulder responsibility. Because it increases your moral concepts, right? To read. But it doesn't increase your ability to give a deep pocket to shoulder the other, to give food to the other. How many food you can give to other around the world? How deep is your part? And that will be your ability. So that's why uh, Trump's story also tells us actually. You got to be when you kill the, the cow. You got to be graceful, and that's the way you kill. It. That's the style, and that's very high level ethic. Is with grace, not only with ethical, but with grace, with joyful and grace, and that's is very. But that's something possible. Well, Levinas came from a religious tradition that had decided already two thousand years ago that only the people expert in killing the cow painlessly would be allowed to kill the cow. Yeah, no cow's your food. Yeah, no one, <laughs> else, no one else is allowed to kill the cow, except the trained expert sure. who kills it painlessly. I, 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 I was thinking when you were talking about Nietzsche at the start of what you were saying, that both Nietzsche and Levinas uh, do uh, think of the individual free of the system, but Nietzsche thought of the individual, it seems to be in an aesthetic sense, in terms of differences, spatial temporal differences, that is the uniqueness of the work of art. Whereas Levinas thought of the individual as different owing to its election to responsibility. And, and in these are worlds apart. Yeah. And, and, and I'm not so sure that this was Nietzsche's idea only because he wished to disturb the bourgeoisie of his day, uh, although, yes, he did disturb the bourgeoisie of his day. But, but I think this, this, this path uh, is ultimately not a disturbance. It, it, it gets co-opted, it gets appropriated, it's, it's used in advertising, it just becomes part of our world. It's a difference that ends up not being a difference. Um, uh, although I shouldn't say that. It goes on forever. That's the beauty of art. We, 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 these differences go on forever. And they, they brighten our world. They, they make our world more enjoyable. They, they, they keep a vivacity to it. I, I'm not against that. But I think the true difference is the one Levinas is talking about. The difference that is irreplaceability of your own responsibility for the other. That, that, that's, that's what I would say about that. Yeah. In Dao Jianlai Daoism, he was actually criticizing because these people they see um, more morality as um, ideology. Yeah. Uh, they see. So, so that's why he kind of criticized them, but he used them to say, but anyway, they free the subjectivity and they can take responsibility now. Right. So that's the term, but of course he criticized them. Yeah. yeah. But a living house in aesthetics is always a good question. That is, that is, a, that is a good question. I, I think one answer that I've come up with, because this is a question that plagues living house is that in the same way that we have to provide food and clothing and shelter, we also have to provide education and, 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 and conversation and, and, and beauty. We, we should provide beauty for people. We, we, we shouldn't build these Soviet-style block houses. We, we should build beautiful houses for people. We should provide them delicious food. Not just food, delicious food, right? And I think, why not? Why can't the aesthetic come and play there? We're not, 
We're not, you know, it's awful the way, you know, the idea that you have these soup kitchens, they look horrible. They should be in expensive hotels, right? They should sit down to wonderful dinners. Isn't this the role of aesthetics in no, ethics? I have to disagree with one time. <laughs> Go for it. I think it's not maybe nothing aesthetic what I'm thinking of. Maybe nothing ethnic is not a good food, good dinner in a luxury place. It's got to be provided food to the other with a style. That's what I'm saying. Creativity, not the food itself. No, no, no. That's not good. Like I may have expressed in terms of the object, but of course yeah. the presentation. Uh, it, no it, it, it's the yeah. way you provide to the sure. food to the other. Yeah, well, For example, some, some homeless people they just don't want to take your charity. No, no, no. That, so you got to think about some creative way. They can accept the way you want to express your ethical feeling. Absolutely. So that is something challenging. The, maybe nothing ethical. Absolutely. That's what I'm thinking. Right. It's not the, the content itself. It's the way, the well, creativity, the, 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 the aesthetics. The, they're inseparable. Yeah. In other words, to think you could separate it, they just say, we'll provide this nutrition, is not actually to provide for the other. That is the style, the, the, the thing presented, the style, is part of what one provides for the other. That's, that's what I'm doing with you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking, and that's the, part that, that, that's the first time with that insight that you're saying, that I'm saying right now, that I've been able to understand a Levy Nelson aesthetic. Mm -hmm. right. the, the world is not bare. The, the world comes adorned. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, adorned. Humanity. Yeah, humanity. Yeah. yeah. There's a... There's a Joey, yeah. he said, bro, I'm not issue, I think. Uh, That's even, why. Even, even okay. like, uh, problem. Perhaps, because, uh, of course, uh, he speaks about the high value of responsibility, we all agree with that. At the same time, uh, the, the subject's relationship with the other is always filled with the tension. Because, uh, the subject has to suffer the humiliation meted out from the other and uh, the persecution and he is often find himself as a hostage of the other and, uh, and he goes through uh, or undergoes uh, suffering uh, for the other and uh, by undergoing all this persecution and suffering at the same time uh, quite often the other is maltreated him or her, um, the subject. So, how do we verdict it as a, as a joyful experience? And uh, that has to be, be further elaborated. But it's not ruled out in principle. I mean, it, 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 this is not something that I ask me. We could immediately answer and say, oh, no, no, we're not interested. We are interested in answering that question. We want to answer that question. That's, a, that, that's part of the answer of providing a just world. Yeah. I can't remember where he, he talked about the dessert, that you need to serve the dessert first. I can't remember where. And the other, but you do remember. I, I think he was talking about the dessert. I can't remember where, but he was talking about, you yeah. do, you, it's not only your food, you need to offer dessert to the other. Mm -hmm. And also another place is very interesting, when he was talking about labor and tools, Actually, he was talking about the tool should be embellished. Mm -hmm. it's, I don't know, I never understand why he was saying, and this is quite like, yeah, it should be embellished, it should be a beautiful tool. Yeah, he said it's embellished. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think he has this, but he doesn't want to let this to go to the side, like, I, I, I pursue beauty. That's what he dis disliked. But I don't think he will say, and personally, I don't think he will say, I dislike beauty, of course. I just say like it doesn't want the other things to serve the purpose of beauty. Then if you have beauty, you can serve ethics. That's no problem for him. I think it's no problem. This is not a problem for him. No, no, no. I think everything finds a place as long as one yeah. knows what what we're doing things for. Yeah. If we know what we're doing things for, yeah. right? For a moral and just society, yeah, yeah. then beauty finds its place. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. We, we lose track of what we're doing things for. Yeah. And it's so easy to lose track. Yeah, yeah. Did Levy Nelson like to eat? Did he like to eat? Enjoy uh, food. <laughs> I only ate with him one. Well, no, at the uh, at the Cerecy La Salle, we all ate together. Um, but only once he took me out to dinner. And uh, 
uh, took me very, to a very nice restaurant. Uh, after I had driven him back from Servicey La Salle as, uh, as a thank you, he took uh, me and Jacques Roland uh, out to dinner at a, a very fancy kosher restaurant in Paris that I, I never could have afforded to go to. Okay. He was a he student. Just got out of it, so he <coughs> You are of course he paid. You are a poor student. Uh, but uh, 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 I, I have no idea that he did not like the EU. And but, I mean, remember we saw this line where he criticizes Simone Weil? Uh, I said it was Simone Weil. Yeah, the yeah. anorexia? There's no, there's no desire for anorexia yeah. in Levinas. Yeah. Uh, but but it's, it's a question of balance, and, and, and yeah. it's a question of balance, really, yeah. perspective. Uh, and, and even going to a fine kosher restaurant, somewhere in the back of our minds is people are starving somewhere else. But here we are. It's like I said, the difference between policy and principle. We are in Paris. He wants to take me out to dinner in Paris. So, of course, we could mail the money to some charity, but we're going to have to have dinner anyway. He wanted to express his gratitude. Uh, so why not have a nice meal? Uh, uh, Raymond made me one of the nicest meals I've ever had. Uh, he, 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 in fact, he did it for the, the whole invented. apartment. Yeah. <laughs> he my, he came and he one. told me how, what a cook he was. And, uh, and I said, can you cook uh, us in the Department of Religious Studies in yeah. North Carolina? The chair, Tim. The chair, the chair. We'll, we'll yeah. studies. Uh, and he made the most exotic meal we've ever In fact, the dessert was so exotic I couldn't eat it. <laughs> <laughs> that was... This that was tastes this. like... Yeah. Well, smell like... Smell like a hell. Tastes like heaven. Smells like hell. Tastes like heaven. That's fruit. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of special tropical fruit. Right. Yeah. Right. That's, that's the one. No, half the people didn't finish. It was so no, no, <laughs> nothing, nothing I know of in living out his life. But but he lived very modestly. I mean, he like Sartre. He he didn't own any property. He had his own books. He had a rented apartment. He had no car. Uh, he lived extremely modest. He didn't cash in on his books. Actually. His book said it's also mine. Uh, so he lived a very modest life. Can it be that you started to talk about dinner because everybody is oh. starving? Oh, let's, 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 but I, I mean, it's uh, just a question. No, no, let's, uh, let's but could be some, uh, talking about dinner. But maybe somebody uh, would like to dance or to sing a song? Dance <laughs> song? I sang a song. You did? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but maybe somebody else would like to? I have a rhythm when I was young. <laughs> I was glad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy because when we so saw this feature in Bobby Nows, we're thinking, how could they possibly be connected? Right? I think we've managed. Yeah. So you, you continue. There should be some wine and, and some water. But are we going to another room? <laughs> Not yet.